In this section, we take a look at runtime load balancing. Now that we know that executions can be run across multiple nodes and JVMs on each node, let's look at how these executions are distributed across the nodes. Load balancing is done by the head node of the cluster. We think in terms of work units, and this is how it works. A normal schedule process execution counts as one work unit, no matter the size or document count of the execution. The head node of the cluster has some administrative functions that it has to take care of, so it counts as one work unit as well. A general mode web service execution, like an inbound web request, counts as one work unit. An atom worker, which we will cover in later slides, counts as two work units. And the head node keeps track of the number of work units each node is handling and distributes executions accordingly, regardless of size or resource needs of the execution. This slide shows that a molecule with three nodes will distribute execution to the node with the least amount of running processes. In this case, node three gets the next scheduled execution. And there you see its work unit is increased to two. If two or more nodes have the same amount of work units, then the head node assigns the next execution to the node that did not most recently get an execution. So again, in this image, if another process came in, now node three would get it because it has only two work units. Then the next execution would be assigned to node one because node one and three would both have three work units, but node three was most recently had an execution. So the newest execution goes to node one. Real-time executions are handled differently than scheduled executions. If you are running a molecule or group of atoms for real-time executions, typically customers use an external load balancer outside of Boomi. Then you can handle authentication at the load balancer and distribute load to the atom or node. Without that external load balancer, all real-time requests would go to the same node. So to avoid that bottleneck, the load balancer can use each node's IP address to send that request to the appropriate node. A group of atoms is a different setup. It too requires an external load balancer, which can then direct requests to particular atoms. The big difference is that adding nodes does not impact your license count in a molecule, but adding atoms to a group of atoms does impact your license count, and those atoms need to be maintained independently of one another. There are some specific use cases, however, where this would be an advantageous setup. For example, you can configure each atom separately and so apply heavy resources to the more used atom and lighter resources to the one that's not as busy. Latency is the delay from input or receipt of the inbound request until the execution begins processing. We can enable a low latency option in the build tab at design time. And this option greatly decreases process execution time by not logging some process states. For example, the request or response data is not recorded. Process metrics are not recorded in view process state. The process log is still available, but inbound data's document logs are disabled. Essentially, when the process executes in low latency, it executes in the heap space allocated and does not use the shared file storage to store data. Writing the data across the network to the data storage can have a performance impact. Low latency reduces the amount of data written to that file share. Low latency is under the Options tab on the Process Canvas. The dropdown next to the Process mode is either General or Low Latency. Something I referred to earlier, the Atom Worker, is a technique used for web service or real-time processes that are executed on the cloud runtime. Atom Workers are related to a cloud where the default behavior is forked execution and each execution spawns a new JVM. There is a certain amount of latency involved to spin up that JVM, around 10 to 12 seconds. In order to reduce response time in a cloud, we employ an Atom Worker. It is a persistent JVM that lives for 24 hours and will only exist on a single node at a given time. You do not designate specific nodes as an atom worker node, nor do you define how many atom workers will run on a given node. 
the cloud can be configured to only instantiate Atom workers on a subset of the nodes. Workers have settings for max simultaneous executions, max queued executions, and queued execution timeout. Once the maximum simultaneous executions has been reached, additional requests will be queued. If you are running web services in a cloud, it is almost necessary to have an Atom worker to reduce the runtime of spinning up JVMs. This is for cloud only, because in a molecule, the nodes always persist, so there is no spin up time for them. A real time process using any of these listed connectors uses the Atom worker automatically. There are a few limits to be aware of. For web services, server connectors, the maximum number of web service processes that can execute simultaneously is 20. And for low latency mode requests running on an Atom worker, the maximum web service process execution time is 30 seconds. Here's a screenshot of Atom worker properties available to you in the cloud management. The cloud can be configured to only instantiate Atom workers on a subset of nodes. You also have the ability to set some performance properties such as maximum simultaneous executions, max queued executions, and queued execution timeout. Let's review some best practices. Think of ways to best use the flow control shape to do parallel processing on threads and JVMs to make the most use of system resources. Make use of a load balancer where necessary. We always recommend real-time processes run in low latency mode. If you are running in a cloud, we always recommend running on Atom workers. It is important to set local working directories through Atom management to reduce the amount of data being written to your network file share. If you have increased and have a large heap space, you should invoke the garbage collector in Java settings, especially if you have type performance requirements. If you are going to maintain a clustered environment, whether it's a molecule or a cloud, we recommend monitoring your runtime using JMX. This allows you to monitor your JVMs that are running in your environment.